Hello everyone, Mr. Fawcett here, and we are back with another Algebra 1 lesson. We're going to continue our discussion of word problems today, focusing on a specific type of word problem called a mixture problem. So we'll get to that in a second, but first we are going to look at a word problem similar to the one from our last video. So we have a problem here. It's, uh, it says, an American Airlines plane is taking off from the ground and rising at a rate of 175 feet per minute. A Delta Airlines plane is descending from a height of 12,000 feet at a rate of 200 feet per minute. And we need to find the time at which the planes are at the same height, as well as find that specific height. So I encourage you to pause the video, try to work out this problem on your own, maybe refer to your notes from the last video, and then come back and see how you did. All right, so we're going to draw a little diagram here. So let me move this up to give us a bit more space, make this a little bit bigger. All right, so I have an American Airlines plane. Uh, my planes are not very good. Uh, so I am just going to say AA plane. And that plane starts off at zero feet because it's on the ground, but it is rising at a rate of 175 feet per minute. Meanwhile, we have a Delta Airlines plane. We'll say Delta. That is already at a height of 12,000 feet. And it's descending at a rate of 200 feet per minute. Our goal is to figure out when the planes are at the same height. So again, our equation is going to look something like this. The AA plane, we could actually say height of, height of AA plane is equal to height of, you know what, we're going to do this again. Just going to pause the video and write it. All right, so the height of the American Airlines plane, well, it starts off at zero feet. So you can write zero or you can just not write it because writing zero or not writing zero is the same thing. And it is rising, so we're adding 175 feet per minute. Well, we need to come up with a variable. So before I finish off this equation, think about what are we trying to figure out? What is, it, what is the problem asking us? Well, it's asking us at what time are the planes at the same height. So our variable is going to represent time or minutes. So I'm going to say... Let M represent minutes, and specifically minutes uh, since the American airline plane takes off. So if it rises at a, f at a rate of 175 feet per minute, well, we can do 175 M. Right? If one minute after the plane has taken off, it'll be at 175 feet. Two minutes after the plane takes off, we would multiply 175 by 2, etc. The height of delta, well, we know that that starts off at 12,000. And the key thing here is that it's descending. So we're taking away feet from our initial height, and we're doing so at 200 feet per minute, so 200 m. Okay, if it's, if it's been descending for four minutes, it would be 200 times four, and we would subtract that from 12,000. Well, now we just have a single variable equation to solve. So I'm going to add 200 m to both sides. So I get 375 m is equal to 12,000. Again, I just added 200 m to both sides. Now I divide by 375. Uh, we'll, we'll write this one in. We have some space. And that means m is equal to 32. 
And remember, this M represents minutes. So we're asked two questions. We're asked what time are the planes at the same height, but then we're asked, well, what is that height going to be? So I'm going to erase some of this just so I have some extra space. You guys should still have space for this for this problem. You should probably write a little smaller than I do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little sentence explaining this 32. So the planes are at the same height after 32 minutes. And then we need to find out what that height is. So I'm just going to take the American Airlines plane. So the height of the American Airlines plane is 0. And again, you don't have to write it because that's our initial height. Plus 175 times 32. So 175 times 32 gives us 5,600 or 5,600 feet, which is the height of both planes. After 32 minutes or at 32 minutes, either one is okay. Again, don't just focus on getting the answers, but focus on explaining what those answers are and what they represent. Okay, so this little sentence I wrote up here in black is important, and as well as explaining what the 5600 represents. Okay, let's jump into some problems we have for today. Let's erase this, and let's talk about a mixture problem. So it says a scientist is mixing two solutions. She mixes four liters of a solution that is 28% salt. And you could just think of a solution as a liquid. So in this case, there's a liquid with a little bit of salt in it. 28% of that uh, mixture is salt. So she mixes four liters of the solution that is 28% salt with nine liters of a solution that is 16% salt. And she wants to know, or he wants to know, I guess I said she here, what percent of the final solution is salt? And I think it's going to help to draw a picture here. So I'm going to do my best to draw some scientific looking beakers or flasks. I'm not exactly sure which is which in a science classroom. We'll make our final beaker a little bit bigger. So in my first beaker, I have four liters of a solution that is 28% salt. In my second beaker, I have nine liters of a solution that is 16% salt. And I want to figure out what is the final percentage of salt going to be. So I should be able to figure out my total number of liters. If I add 4 liters to 9 liters, that's going to give me 13 liters. But I do have to figure out my percentage, and that's going to take a little bit of work. So I want to figure out what percentage um, of salt is that 13 liter concentration or 13 liter solution going to be. So maybe one way to think about this is if you have something that is for or if you have a solution that's 28% salt, there's going to be more salt in that solution than the solution that is 16% salt. And when you add them together, your final concentration is going to be somewhere in the middle. Okay, it's not going to be bigger than 28%, uh, and it's not going to be smaller than 16%. It's going to be some percentage in the middle. So what we can do is we can compare the amount of salt. So salt from these, and again, I'm not sure whether they're beakers or flasks, but it doesn't really matter. And we can say the amount of, so the amount of, of salt from these beakers equals amount of salt in 
final beaker. Okay, so if we can figure out the amount of salt in the maroon flask and the red flask, we can add them together and we should get the amount of salt that's in the uh, final flask. So that's what we're going to do. To find the amount of salt, we multiply the volume by the concentration. So you guys can leave these words up here on yours, obviously. Don't erase them. I'm just going to erase them on my screen so I have some more space. And you can just put this equation right beneath the words. Having the words there, I think, will help you. So to find the total amount of salt in this maroon beaker right here, I'm going to multiply 4 by the concentration percentage. So 4 times, instead of, I'm just going to convert my percent to a decimal, so 4 times 0.28 plus 9 the volume, 9 liters, times 0.16, that's going to be equal to the volume of the final solution times the percentage, or in this case, uh, times the percentage if you convert it to decimal. So we'll say x. And because I'm using x, I need to say what x represents. So we are going to say, let x represent concentration of salt in final solution. So we have an equation here that I think you could now go ahead and solve. But again, I want you to try to understand where this equation came from. So let me let's go let's go do the next step for this equation. I think it'll make a little bit more sense. If I multiply 4 times 0.28, that gives me 1.12. So I get 1.12. Now what this means is that there's 1.12 liters of salt in the first beaker. Right? There's 4 liters of solution. So 4 liters of liquid and salt combined. But as far as salt goes, there's just 1.12 because that's 28% of 4. If I do the same thing with uh, my red beaker, I get 1.44. So what that means is that there's 1.44 liters of salt in my red beaker. There's 9 liters total, but as far as salt goes, there is only 1.44 liters. So if I add those together, that should give me the total amount of salt in my green beaker. So let's come up here, actually. If I add 1.12 and 1.44, I get 2.56 is equal to 13x. And if I divide both sides by 13, that is going to give me approximately, because we are going to have to round here, approximately 0.197. We're going to round to three decimal places. So x is equal to 0.197, which means our percentage here, right? We have to convert the decimal back to a percent that is going to be equal to approximately 19.7. So the, our final solution is about 19.7% salt, um, which again is in between the 28% and the 16% that we started with. Okay, so it, it may take you a couple times to listen through this explanation to understand where the equation comes from and the relationship between the percents and the liters, but, well, I, I would go ahead and do that. I would listen to this a couple of times if you're unsure of where this equation come from, comes from, because we're going to use this concept throughout the rest of our problems in this packet. Okay, let's get rid of this. Let's do one more together. All right, this next one is about a baker. 
So it says a baker is mixing two types of brownie batter. She mixes seven cups of a batter that is 12% chocolate with two cups of a batter that is 42% chocolate. And we need to figure out what percent of the final batter will be chocolate. Well, we know that our percent should be somewhere in between 12 and 42. So you can draw a little diagram if you want. I'll go ahead and do that. So we have seven cups or seven C and that's 12% plus uh, two cups of a brownie mix that is 42% chocolate. And that should equal a brownie mix that has nine cups total and is some percentage. We don't know what. Okay, let's set up an equation. I'm going to do 7 times 0.12. That's going to give me the number of cups of chocolate in that mix, uh, just chocolate. I'm then going to do 2 times 0.42 for the number of cups of chocolate in the red pan. And then I'll have 9, and we'll just call this x. So we'll say let x represent chocolate concentration of final batter. All right. So if I do 7 times 0.12, that is going to give me 0.84 plus 0.84, because 2 times 0.42 is also 0.84. That is equal to 9x. If I add 0.84 and 0.84 together, I get 1.68 is equal to 9x. And if I divide both sides by 9, that is going to give me approximately 0.187. So again, we want the percent. So we convert that to a percent by just multiplying by 100 or moving the decimal places, the decimal place two to the right. So we get approximately 18.7%. So our final brownie batter is 18.7% chocolate. All right, maybe we have time for one more. Yeah, so I want to do a problem where the variable is something different than it was in the first two problems. So we're going to do number four. It says a lab technician needs 25 liters of a solution that is 15% acid for a certain experiment. However, she only has a solution that is 10% acid and a solution that is 30% acid. How many liters of the 10% and the 30% solutions should she, she mix to get what she needs? So let's start with the diagram. The setup is the same as far as the type of experiment happening, but our numbers are going to look a little bit different and our variables are going to look a little different. So it says she needs 25 liters of a solution that is 15% acid. That is what she wants to end with because that's what she needs for her experiment. She doesn't have it though, so she has to create it. So she wants to end with 25 liters of something that is 15% acid. Now, it does give us some other pieces of information. It tells us that one of the starting solutions is 10% acid. That's not red, it's pink. So we've got 10% there. And then we have another one that is 30%. The problem is we don't know how many liters of each. Right? These are both question marks. These are both variables. We don't want to have two variables, though. We just want to be able to have one variable. So let's call one of these x. I'll call the red one x. 
which means I now need to write out what x represents. So the way we drew it, we're going to say let x represent the number of liters of the 10% solution because we're putting x inside of the red uh, flask or the red beaker, so it's going to represent the number of liters of that 10% solution. Now, is there a way for me to also use an X somewhere in my green beaker or my green flask? I can't just put X here, right? Because X doesn't stand. I can't put X there because X doesn't stand for the number of liters of the 10% of the 30% solution. It stands for the number of liters for the 10%. And we don't know that these green and red beakers have the same amount of liquid in them. So I can't just do X over here. But what I can think about is that my total is 25. Right, so the total amount I need to end with is 25. Well, if I start with X, then this right here would have to be 25 minus X. And you could think about it this way, if X was 10, well, I'd have to add 15 liters of my green beaker to make 25. If my red beaker or if my X was 5, I'd have to add 20 liters of my green beaker. So 25 minus X is the expression for the amount of liters in my green beaker. Now I have enough to start writing my equation. So I'm going to do X times 0 0.10 after I convert 10% to a decimal plus, and this is key, in parentheses, 25 minus x times 0 0.30. You could also just do times 0 0.3. It's the same thing. And then over here, I get 25 times 0.15. There's, it, this equation is a little bit more complicated to solve, but there's only one variable, so we are able to do it. So I'm going to get 0.1x plus now I have some distributing to do. I've got 30 times 25, which is going to be equal to 750. Sorry, 0 0.30 times 25. So that's going to be uh, 7.5, rather. Quite a big difference. So just to be clear, 25 times 0 0.30 is 7.5. Minus... 0 0.30 times x is equal to 25 times 0.15, which is 3.75. Again, I'm just going to continue simplifying. So this is going to give me negative 0.2x if I combine my like terms, plus 7.5 is equal to 3.75. We're going to come up here to give us more space. So I'm going to, I'm going to subtract 7.5 from both sides. And actually, I'll just write this out because it may be getting a little confusing for you. Let's use a different color. Let's use blue. So you get minus 0.2x plus point, sorry, plus 7. 0.5 equals 3.75. I'm going to subtract 7.5 from both sides. And that is going to give me negative 0.2x is equal to negative 3.75. Divide by 0.2. And that is going to give us exactly... 18.75. So it's not just asking us to find x, because x is the number of liters in our red beaker, or the 10% solution. So I can write that. I get 18.75. And then if I do 25 minus 18.75 in my green beaker, Let's get my green marker, I will get 6.25. So 18.75 liters of my 10% solution added with 6.25 liters of my 30% solution 
gives me a final solution of 25 liters and 15% acid. So throughout the rest of these problems in this packet, as well as in your uh, homework packet, there are different places the variable could be. It's not always going to be a certain percent. It's not always going to be um, a certain volume. It could be anywhere in the problem, uh, any, anywhere in the problem. So you have to read the problem carefully to understand where to put the variable. Okay, uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will look forward to seeing you next time, but make sure you get some practice in before, before then.